Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I see we are almost uh, complete for every attendee to um, attend. Let's wait a couple of minutes, but let me already introduce myself. My name is Bart van Dongen. I am a um, security consultant at Metastore, and I will be talking about today about agile security, the holistic approach, and that applied to the vulnerability management program that we run at Metastore. The idea is to map an agile security approach towards vulnerability management. And then in the second part of this presentation, you can look at uh, what type of, of security program that we use. So we are partnered with Tenable and you will see firsthand how Tenable then applies this agile security approach uh, in its dashboards, in its analysis. And um, then you can afterwards you can ask questions. So there is a Q&A section on the right hand side that you can use if you have any questions during or after the, the uh, presentation or the demo uh, and we will try to answer them in, in an, uh, what is it, uh, in a, in a, for everyone during the presentation. If the question is more related to you specific, then we will answer it afterwards with another call or with an email so that it's more a one on one um, conversation. OK, so let's start off agile security. What are we actually talking about? Uh, agile is a is a new not a new word, but is a word that is being used in, in business quite a lot. Uh, everything needs to be agile. Everything uh, needs to run by this this uh, this method of uh, project management and it's kind of a method of, of handling a business as a whole. But how do we apply this then to a security program? It's, it's important that this methodology is useful, that it's uh, used um, to your advantage, and that it gives you a holistic approach of your complete security program. So how and, and what are we uh, or are you going to do? So I think the main questions when you're running a security program is, uh, first of all, where are we exposed? So what are my biggest weaknesses? Where do we want to actually uh, invest uh, money? So what should we prioritize as a security measure towards this? So where are we um, are we uh, allocating budget to? And if we're allocating budget, how do we actually reduce this exposure to a maximum level? So it's it's easy to say, right, we, we have a certain security gap but it's not so easy to say how are we going to fix and how are we going to reduce this security risk uh, by maximizing, I think, your resources and minimizing the expenditure of money and resources towards this. So it's a, it's a very difficult exercise that everybody tries to, tries to do all of the time. Um, and especially when you're looking at what a security program needs to be, this is an exercise that needs to be fluent, needs to have quick feedback loops where you can quickly assess what is working for you at the time. And do we need to reprioritize uh, because of new exposure levels, because of new information that came to light? So it's it needs to be a very, again, agile uh, type of, of process so you can adjust on the fly and see what is at, uh, at the moment the most influential Secure, uh, the most influential attack vector and that, that you need to, to address. Now, who would like, uh, who is benefiting from this agile security? Uh, it's people and, pro and um, people and companies that are aiming to, first off, prioritize their security actions. So first you have the security program, but deeper in this, if we're talking about vulnerability management, for example, how do you prioritize your actions in this program? How do you um, see what is most vulnerable, what is most applicable to your environment to actually remediate this? Is it through configuration changes? Is it through patching? Is it through uh, certain compliancy features? So, or, or is it just uh, something you need to live with? Uh, it's, it's, uh, or uh, are you accepting that risk? So it's constantly readjusting and reprioritizing the security actions and seeing where do you need to go. 
um, if you take it on a higher level, so where do I invest, invest my people, budget, my time? That's something that you also need to do. But today, I think we want to focus more on the vulnerability management side of things. If you take it higher, then you need to see, hey, do you want to invest more in identity and access management? Do we need to look more into an, uh, an asset management database so we know what we're protecting? So it's it's very different priorities for different stages of maturity where you are in your security program. Now, the second part is first you have the security actions and you prioritize. The second part is where you can see and where you can measure what you're actually doing. So it's very important to see and to, to measure your, your effectiveness. And the second part, your efficiency of the security controls. Why? Because an agile approach is very much um, a look on, on what you're doing at that moment. So how do you readjust? This is only something you can do if you have effective measures of your uh, effective um, measurements where you can say, where you take, can take analysis and say, all right, we are at that point, at that point, we need to adjust a bit because the measures and the, the, um, the, the actual controls are saying something different that, than we want to achieve or are saying exactly what we want to achieve. So it's either a confirmation or it's something that you need to analyze and you can adjust your program towards this. I think the last part is the, the guidance of your security operations. So if you have the two first parts in order where they need, they know what the actual priorities are and what um, how they are performing at this, this will guide your security operations in a very much a more effective way uh, where you can, uh, again, uh, can, can have your budget, people and time and, and, and your toolings focused on one uh, goal. So where the efficiency of your security program and your security team becomes higher and therefore, you're getting more, uh, more um, out of your out of your um, out of your security program and your security team. Now, the first part: if you look at what should I fix now and why should I fix it now, eh? it's a continuous assessment of your priorities, eh, of your risks, and you need to see how are we dealing with this eh? for the reduction of, for example, the business risk. In agile security automation, you continuously like interconnect with three uh, aspects. Uh, first, the vulnerability of the asset, or how, how the configuration is 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 set up. So, what are our technical uh, parts of this? So, how how big is this vulnerability? I think the second part is then the actual value of this asset. So, how um, valuable. Is this asset within within my business process? Are we talking that something that is business critical, or is it is it something that we can that we can live without for a day? So that has a huge impact on how you deal with um, the actual the actual security risk and how high the actual security risk will be. The last part is then the probability eh, or the likelihood that something like this will happen. So what is the actual likelihood of the targeted asset to being breached? The attack, the, the hacking risk and the risk analytics of the IT system. Um, it's, it's, it's very important that you have a, a clear view on, on what the probability of an actual breach can be. If you take these three factors, you can you can certainly get a good view on what your actual business risk is and how do you need to to um, to value this in your security program as a whole. So it's it's a, it's a, it's a difficult exercise, of course, because everything is a bit um, not skewed, but more you need to assess this for your own um, entity and for your own security program. But if you take it like it's it's more of an, an um, a framework that you need to work within. Then you have a framework where you can where you can can um, where you can defend your security program, but also can motivate everybody who works within that security program. Now, how can you know eh, what to fix now? So how do you actually get where you are, or how do you how do you uh, work your way towards such a such an um, 
uh, strategy is there are mainly uh, two modes you can you can start with is uh, either you have it with a strategy and with the risk management which is i think more of an an enterprise level type of approach where you can say right we uh, we we involve uh, fully strategy uh, uh, strategy and we involve risk management which are then uh, probably different departments and we assess what is um in a business pro process uh, the the most critical part and there we need to to kind of focus our security measures towards but you talk into a, a process minded uh, type of, of of security measurement i think the second part is uh, without business mapping information it's where you go and and work with a an um, a best practice program where you go and see okay what's uh, what's normal in the actual in the world and how do you adjust to this you have several different of these frameworks eh? if you talk about nist if you can talk about for example the sys uh, the, the the sans sys controls so there are different advisories towards this it's it's up to you to choose what you want to to follow and where do you want to go but these give you more of a standardized way of working towards the security strategy. Now, when I'm talking about the strategy, uh, it's good that we can then focus a bit on, for example, the SANS uh, controls, so the SIS controls. These are the first six controls that they, for example, give um, as, an, as an advisory to start with. And that's a bit, I think, the anchor point why we are as Metastore into um, I specialized in, in vulnerability management because we feel it's the first step towards a successful security program. If you don't have the basics right, it's very difficult then to grow in a maturity model, uh, for example, towards towards uh, a SIEM or towards an EDR pro an endpoint detection and response program. So it's very difficult to have not have the basics right and then already start with the, the advanced stuff. Not that we don't do the advanced stuff, but I think this is for, for us a, a core business. So if you look at, for example, these sys controls, you have the first one, inventory and control of hardware, software, um, which is, is something that, that uh, a vulnerability management, a vulnerability uh, scanning tool can provide. So it's uh, something where you can start off with a discovery scan and see what's within your your range and what is within your, your enterprise environment or within your IT environment. So it already gives you an, an idea of where you are. What is my, uh, what are my assets that I need to protect? It's, uh, it's talked a lot within the, in the, the industry about shadow IT. It's parts, partially it's the, um, it's the applications, for example, now cloud applications, which we, it's very difficult to control which the end user are using, but also just hardware and software, which is in your environment. There is so many people, I so many, many um, installations of different software that it's very difficult to keep track. Uh, and then it's it's very common that, that most organizations don't have a clear view of what's actually within their IT environment. So first start with uh, knowing what's there, and then you can start with knowing how to protect it. So the third one is continuous vulnerability management. That's something uh, that's the core business of a vulnerability management tool. Um, fourth, control your user uh, use of admin privileges. Also something you can you can assess with a vulnerability management tool. Um, and then you have secure configuration of hardware, software, mobile devices, laptops, workstations, and servers. So it's hardening of these devices by configuration management. Again, something you can facilitate with an, um, a vulnerability management scanner. And then the maintenance monitoring and analysis of audit logs. Uh, that's a configuration again that you that you need to do, but the whole log management part, I think, is a is a separate is a separate conversation. So the way I look at it, it's already five of the first basic controls that uh, sense um suggests you can already get that information from just buying a vulnerability management tool but it's not only buying the vulnerability management tool it's also working with it so how do you how do you become efficient and then with such a security tool and how do you work towards a better security posture 
it's uh, so the, the measurement and the efficiency that we talked about previously is something that comes into play when you're when you're actually looking and when you're actually um, having that conversation with your risk manager with your your CEO. Right? So how do you prove that you're doing a good job? So these are some different graphs of how an, um, a security program could run. So on the right, for example, on the right uh, bottom side, you see a security program which is just increasing and accumulating uh, different types of risks and is, is responding, but not sufficiently enough or not if efficiently enough that it's just building up security, um, what is it, uh, a risk in your security. Um, and then you have the, so the, the, the best response would then be profile C, as they, they talk about here, where you see that there is an actual spike of what a security risk would be, uh, meaning that you already know what your security risks are. And then a short, shortly after this, it's being handled and is being dealt with so that it's it goes down quickly so that you go back to a, a lower security risk or to an acceptable security risk now in the whole let's say security risk and how do you assess this you have to take into account the vulnerability management uh, life cycle so it's uh, how do you get to an, a, a good vulnerability uh, to a good security control and to a good um, security program is establishing the right governance and establishing the right process. So it's already if you have this process, which is uh, doesn't look doesn't look um, is it uh, difficult, but it's very difficult to get implemented into a large entity and to kind of enforce throughout the entity. It's uh, so the first phase is where you discover and which I talked about, which would, for example, would already cover the first two controls of an um, of an um, sans sys control where you identify and map every every asset which is within your your range. So you can you can see what you're talking about. Is it IT? Is it IOT? Is it a cloud environment? So it doesn't really matter. You are looking at your complete environment doesn't say it, it, and it's, it covers all of these things that are in the middle. The second part is assessment. So you need to understand the state of all this is uh, all of these assets. So where are the, the vulnerabilities? What are the misconfigurations? What are we talking about here? Is it is it uh, one asset who has a hundred vulnerabilities which are not important or is it an, uh, an asset which is one vulnerability which is very critical? You need to assess and need to, to, to look at what you're dealing with. Then you need to understand, so you need to analyze it and need to see where are we and what is the current threat landscape, what is out there. So what is what do we prioritize? And again, we come back to the first part where we see how do you prioritize your security actions and that's through the right analysis and having the right data to work with. So now you look at uh, the several several factors that are out there, meaning the threat landscape, the vulnerability severity, the current the current state of the threat, um, and the asset. Uh, what is it? The, the the value of the asset within your entity, and see how you want to prioritize this this uh, this action, being it patch management, being it uh, configuration changes, or or. Uh, I, different types of actions can be can be done here. So that's where we're going now, where you go into the fix. So how do you, is this something that can come in the next patch cycle? Is it something we need to patch immediately? Is it something we need to uh, need to, to make an incident for? You need to have a governance around how to deal with this. Lastly, the measurements. So how successful am I in conducting this cycle? Why? Again, through measurement, you can you can make better decisions. You can improve your program. And you can mature as a vulnerability management program. So, which is a very important step. Um, again, misleading because it's difficult to get the right uh, measurements out of your toolings and the right and and make then decisions on these measurements. But it's a crucial part of having this this cycle down and growing in maturity. So. I think 
this is something every security manager wants to look at and say, yeah, that's something I want, but it's very difficult. So at the moment, there are so many toolings that create alerts and that create incidents and look at your your um, environment and and give you information. But it's it's an overloading uh, wealth of information which is now going to waste. And we just want to have the prioritized alerts. We have the prioritized incidents and we want to know what to work on first and what to work on second. We don't want to work with all of the hundreds different types of, of uh, alerts that is out there. I think yeah, the, the fatigue of, of incidents is, is a real thing within security. Why that's also why uh, most people are, are now uh, I, they want to consolidate most of the toolings within, for example, a seam. Otherwise, it's not possible to, to have more of a silo based approach of a security. But uh, that's something where you need to look at. And that's something, for example, on a vulnerability management program can provide over the different um, platforms, can give you a prioritized um, working list of what to do. Now, if you talk, eh, we talked about agile, we talked about vulnerability management. What does this give you on which different types of levels. Uh, we, so it's it's a tactical part, there's a strategic part, and then we talked about the operational part. So the tactical part is where you are reducing the business risks that are generated. Um, and it's, it's important to also report this as such, so where your security program is working towards reduction of that security risk, um, but you know also need a proof of this. Uh, that's something where Tenable, for example, can facilitate, but it's also something you can you can provide by your own. Uh, as I mentioned, how to how to calculate these security risks. It's it's not within the tooling. It's just something you need to set up yourself and need to look at what are we working with here on a tactical level. I think the security strategic part then is where you measure your security controls. How effective are we with vulnerability management, for example? How quickly are we patching? How quickly are we discovering certain vulnerabilities which are out there? Um, how quickly can we can we um, change the configuration which is crucial to the business uh, to a business uh, critical asset? So where you measure is where you put your, for example, SLAs, and where you work towards improving and then maturing your security program. Last part is the operational part, is just increasing the efficiency of your security team. And nothing works better uh, from a motivational point of view, I think, for your security team than seeing that their resources resources are um, handled and, and controlled in an efficient manner so that their work uh, is taken seriously and that it, it actually has an impact on the organization. So I think those are the three parts that you will see improving when you start adjusting to kind of more of an agile security mindset and incorporating this into your vulnerability management program. So the, the parameters that we look at for, for let's say, as a, as a differentiator, again, is, is the risk prioritization, is the identification of your, your, your attack surface, looking to analyze this continuously and seeing where you need to go and adjusting accordingly. So it's it's a constant uh, exercise of where to go uh, and where to look, but it's it's uh, it's it's a necessary exercise and I think it will pay off in the long run. The second part is the holistic approach is we don't only so I now talked about vulnerability management pro, uh, vulnerability management tooling. But I use this tooling, for example, already for six, no, for five different controls. So it already gives you a, very, a, a lot broader view than just being vulnerability management. So you can prioritize your, your uh, vulnerabilities according to patch management uh, what is it, uh, issues. So try and, and attack this on a, on a more larger scale and a more holistic and eh, more on top, top down than being into the actual control. So seeing it more on a strategic level will connect you more to a business. So we'll give you more empowerment to a business side 
and will give you more of a satisfaction and then kind of a connection with this business. So we think it's a very difficult exercise to do, but it's a necessary one. If we look at how security is, is perceived, we don't always have the best reputation right? within the business. We're seen as, as uh, somebody who slows down the business, but you need to to align with this business and then you can you can um, get them on your side basically that and it's making them understand how you're approaching this and if they understand this then your your empowerment of your security program will be a lot higher so that was my part for the actual presentation um, we now have a demonstration from Konstantinos who will give you a demo, a demo of the actual tooling so we will now go into the tenable um, .io tooling where he can give you um, an, um, a look inside uh, the actual the actual vulnerability management so he will walk through the different dashboards and see how it works. Um, and afterwards, there is uh, there is a chance to to already uh, to to ask some questions. If you want to see more, that's already that also possible. But I think then it's easier to have this in a one-on-one -on -one session, uh, where you can have more of an, an, an uh, personalized approach. Konstantinos. Yes. Hello. Hi. So, uh, <clears throat> my name is uh, Konstantinos. I'm a pre-sales engineer for uh, security uh, products. Uh, and uh, Tenable is one of my favorite ones. Um, can you see my screen now? Can you see the um, the Tenable I/O uh, dashboard? No, not yet. Not yet. The, uh, yeah, no, it's now in live. No, no, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so, um, in, a, in a short time, we're going to see, let's say, the basic uh, char characteristic of, of uh, Tenable I.O. Uh, solution. Uh, it's a pure cloud-based one. Uh, it's uh, uh, actually, uh, in this uh, platform, there are uh, all uh, four products of, of Tenable. Uh, but we're going to focus in vulnerability management and uh, we're going to see uh, yes, how, how we're going to uh, use uh, this tool in order to achieve uh, all this that uh, Bart explained to you. <clears throat> so the first thing is the, when you enter the vulnerability management, you see an overview. It's like a dashboard that it's uh, predefined by Tenable, and uh, well, you cannot change it, but you can see the basic uh, information that uh, you want, uh, let's say, when you log into the system. Eh? So you see the statistics, you see the, your uh, how many assets, uh, the scanning, uh, your vulnerability, trading, okay. Uh, have in mind this, um, it's a demo environment, so uh, you're not going, I mean, this is not a normal trading uh, graph, uh, but here you could see as yes, you have more vulnerabilities when you do a patching, you see that they are uh, lower and, and, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> and then you start um, using the dashboards in order to have uh, a better uh, idea what's happening in your uh, <coughs> environment. So there are uh, again some predefined uh, dashboard like templates that you can use and you can see it here in this area. Uh, so for example, I have already created uh, some uh, using a template, uh, the template of measuring vulnerability. So I click and I have 
uh, this dashboard that gives me more more insights about uh, my uh, infrastructure. So um, of course we're not going to see everything, but just to mention some nice, let's say, widgets. Um, so here uh, we can see um, uh, the matrix of the of CVE and then some uh, scores. Okay. Also have in mind this is a demo one. Uh, so about I mean the 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 information that you see here, eh? maybe it's not very logical sometimes. Uh, so this one uh, maybe it's more interesting. At least uh, I like uh, to to use this one. So here we can see, um, ex for example, the operating system, okay, uh, or uh, some other uh, uh, like network devices, okay. So here, for example, we can see the Windows. Uh, how many they have CVS score more than seven and then important one how many of these vulnerabilities are exploitable and how many of these they can be uh, go away if we patch the the system so it's uh, it's a nice one I like to use it um, of course you can create your own dashboard so if you click again the dashboards, you click here, you can use a template one. So this means you are using one of one of these predefined templates. OK, so for example, they say uh, enable they see that OK, they use a lot the uh, Spectre Meltdown, so they have a, a predefined um, a dashboard. Uh, or you can create uh, your own dashboard from the widget so you can combine different so you can create a custom one and you can add one of the 66 widgets that exist uh, already uh, so tenable try to uh, let's say add uh, these uh, widgets let's say one every month more or less so it's always uh, updated and it's uh, let's say um, try to uh, understand the needs and provide the the, the best uh, widget that you can use it so um, so once you have uh, the general let's say uh, overview of the system uh, you can um, well you can use the other three uh, options here to uh, <clears throat> understand better your environment so the first one it's the assets as Bart explained the first step is to uh, make a discovery scan and see all of your assets here you have uh, um, so here, here you have all the list of the discovered assets in your environment and the nice uh, field here it's uh, this one uh, we call it uh, uh, asset criticality rate in the table it's, it's a, a number from one to ten and this shows um, 10 is let's say a very critical uh, asset in my environment one it's let's say not not important one this is going to be used later uh, when you want to make a priority of your uh, patching uh, schedule huh? so you have the whole uh, list of your assets and you can uh, search and, and see uh, what do you have and what uh, criticality assets it's it's uh, it has then we talk about prioritization so if you click in the solution tab here you see uh, what enable things that is the best solution for your environment so actually they propose you they propose you some remediations um, steps and they tell you why eh? So here you can see that, uh, okay, let's say the first one is uh, apply the security updates for Microsoft.NET Framework September 2018. Why? Because it's 
affects this assets has a really critical one and it can cover 124 CVs in your environment. So it's like to help you for prioritization. OK, really uh, important. The, the security engineers like it. It, it. It's it helps a lot. OK, you gain a lot of time when you have this this um, uh, uh, this suggestion where to start for. It's, it's really a nice uh, feature. Um, OK, then um, you have the tab of vulnerabilities. So here. You can see. All the list of all vulnerabilities that exist in your uh, environment. So you see it's normally it's, it's a big mess. There are a lot of vulnerabilities uh, and and you you say OK, where, where should I start? Uh, where should I start uh, looking? Huh? So that's why you have a really powerful search. So you have a filter here that you can uh, create your own search. This this in, in real life scenario it's when when someone uh, ask you when I say someone from let's say uh, a security administrator or, or, or a manager ask you okay uh, tell me if we have uh, this kind of vulnerability in our system or how many um, VMs have this vulnerability and, and this kind of, of question so in this case you have to enter here and make a search. Uh, nice feature is, is that you can save your search. So um, we're going to see an example here uh, just to show some some uh, options. OK, so there is a search that I name it Windows critical or high in the news. If I click here, I see that uh, I see uh, the fields here, so um, okay, it's, it's the letters are really small, eh? but uh, I, I will tell you what is about. Uh, so the first field is uh, if I have a Windows VM, uh, a Windows uh, machine, and if the severity of the uh, vulnerability it's uh, high or critical, and the last one, it's really interesting one, there is a, a field that it calls uh, in the news. So this means that you can find some vulnerabilities that appeared in, in newspapers or somewhere in the news in general. Eh? So this is uh, sometimes this request come from the um, uh, sea level people. Uh, we heard in the news for this vulnerability. Do we have this vulnerability in our system? So uh, or in general, do we have any very well known vulnerabilities in our system? So if we click apply, we're going to see. Okay, the first one is uh, is Blue Keep. So uh, it's a, it's a nice, interesting uh, one. Uh, the search is really powerful, and and you use it in this kind of of, uh, of scenarios. So when you want to search, what's uh, bas basically for a vulnerability or for an asset. Um, so. Basically, in just um, I think 10 minutes, I, I show to you how you can use the vulnerability management uh, tool of, of Tenable. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, very uh, easy. Okay, we, we saw we see now only uh, how we can um, uh, work with the result of the scanning. Okay? So the, the the scanning it's another. Uh, part here we see uh, basically how the, the um, security uh, administrators uh, use use the tool and the platform. Um, it's I don't think we have a lot of time, so basically it's uh, it's this from from my part. Um, I don't know, Bart, do you want to um, to mention something? Or we should enter in the in the Q and A. Oh, from my side, uh, no. I think that uh, it uh, showed a good connection between what I told and, and what a vulnerability management program would look like. 
And, and as um, you said, uh, we just uh, touched the surface of, of the tool, eh? just to show how you can use it to, to have a better uh, insight of, of the vulnerability. Uh, yes, so the attack surface of, of your of your environment. Eh? We didn't talk about the, the scannings. Uh, this will be better to have it in, in, a, in another session, I guess, how to create and what you can use. Um, yeah, exactly. Maybe from from a discovery point of view or from a, from a scanning point of view, how easy would it be to actually set up? Maybe you can shortly comment on that part. How easy would it be to mm -hmm. set up a, a scan uh, policy within Tenable to, for example, configuration scan for yes. admin mm -hmm. privileges for okay. uh, compliancy? How okay. does that work? Uh, well, I will sort another. Um, can you see now again another uh, dashboard? Yeah, no, it's not changing. That, that's sweet. Uh, it's uh, it's. Wait, can you see? Did, did yeah. you see? Yes, I was okay. in the scans. So uh, and now we're in the, in the scans, uh, and just we are going to create, okay, uh, uh, a new scan. So we see here the templates, and this is all what we need here uh, to to create our our scans. We can use a scanner. We can use an agent, um, uh, and here we have the templates. So uh, this, let's say, it's the advanced uh, network scan, which actually uh, you can very easily generate a scan to a target system, and you don't have to specify what you want to search exactly. But the the scanner is is let's say clever enough that if if you target a Windows VM. Uh, it's checking what um, operating system is running and what uh, applications are, are, are installed and is going to uh, use only, let's say, the plugins as Tenable College to target this specific OS and, and uh, application. Huh? So it's really uh, easy um, to, to, to create a scan. Basically, you just need the target and the credentials and then you don't have to specify something more. Uh, of course, if you want to search for a specific um, vulnerability, uh, because you, as you have a request from your, uh, from the C-level uh, people, tell me, do a scan today and tell me what's the result for, I think they, uh, yes, so um, here you can see some, uh, they call it tac tactical scans. Huh? You have the bad log detection, basel, so um, spectre and meltdown. So some really famous. You you can uh, you have already predefined. Eh? And what they do here, it's just uh, specify the plugins that you need to discover uh, this vulnerability. Uh, very easy. Something else that maybe it's it's important. It's the policy compliance auditing. So uh, you mentioned about uh, sys control, for example, eh? so sys template eh? or some uh, mistakes in the configuration. Eh? So with this, with this scan template, you can um, specify here what what template you are going to use. So you see here you have a lot. The big list of, of uh, network device, for example, uh, you see checkpoint Cisco, and then you see if you go to the Windows, there is a big, big list, of course. Uh, and here you can use some templates of, of, uh, of Sys um, organization, and now you are it's very easy and very uh, you are sure that you are going to run this test and see if you are compliant or not with this. Uh, yes, with these standards, this also it's something that they like. Uh, they like a lot the the security engineers eh, to to use. Um, 
it's okay. well, I think there, you're, there are more you're almost more, out of time. Eh? Which, yes, yeah. uh, need to, to yes. take time into account. Yes, um, so um, that's it from my side, I guess. Yeah, from my side as well. So thanks everyone for attending, for watching, and for for um, for uh, giving us your your attention. Um, if there's anything you want to mention. Um, let us know. Please contact uh, Iris, myself, or Constantinos. We will share um, contact details also after the um, the event, so you can you can uh, get get in touch with us if you want to. And then I wish everyone a good evening and uh, hopefully uh, another great week at home, or maybe already some of us, uh, some of you already are back at the office. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Have a nice evening. Goodbye.